Maintenance Monday. Hello and welcome back to Maintenance Monday. I'm glad to be here. I hope you're glad to be here. I wanted to do this on Christmas. I wanted to do a little Christmas special, some singing, some talking, opening presents, and then um, a little of this um, lesson. But I decided I'll just do it now since I missed Christmas um, to do it. I hope you guys had an awesome Christmas and it's been an awesome holiday season and um, yeah. So this is going to be about a very popular topic, popular name that maybe we don't um, truly understand or truly or haven't truly grasped everything that comes with this beautiful name. And so um, we're going to start at 1 Samuel chapter 3 and I'm going to get right into the word. So why don't you take a moment right now, go ahead and like subscribe and share this video hopefully you've been with me long enough to know that we are going to go line by line precept upon precept so you should be already comfortable and ready to like and share this video share this video um share the word of god by clicking share right so it's free so do it uh first samuel chapter three Right? And we're going to read verses 1 through 11. And I just want to read this. It's two very popular passages that we're going to go to. But I hope that you um, get a little, a little spark of what I've gotten. You know, something when, you're, when your heart grasps something. You ever got, you ever had, uh, when you're able to, you can say, I know this and I understand it, even though I can't articulate it yet, right? Intellectually, I don't have the words, but my heart has experienced this and I hope this does it for you. So 1 Samuel chapter 3, if you don't get the whole articulation and everything that goes along with it, 1 through 11, and it reads, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. So, I want to show you something. If you go back to 1 Samuel chapter 1, all the way down to verse 22, it says, But Hannah went up. Now, you guys should remember Hannah. We dealt with Hannah when we were dealing with driving wants and societal pressures. Right? So, she wanted a baby. She couldn't have a baby. And it just took over. Well, remember the Lord granted her her request when Eli saw her in the temple and that baby that she had was Samuel. And one of the things she said, watch this, but Hannah went not up for she said unto her husband, I will not go up unto the child be weaned and then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and there abide forever. So Hannah has already decided that she, the baby that God gives her, she's going to give him back to the Lord. And how does she give him back to the Lord? She takes him to the priest, right? She takes him to the house of the Lord where he will live. Then if you go down to verse 28, it says, Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord and he worship the Lord there. So right here, again, I'm just trying to paint this picture for you because I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Then if you go to the next chapter, chapter 2, verse 11, it reads, And Elkanah went to Ramah to his house, and the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. Think about that. Who did the child minister to? It says, And the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. Then 18, But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child girded with a linen ephod. Then 21, and the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. So she did just what she said. She gave her child to the Lord. And the word of God says he grew. Verse 26 in chapter 2 again says, And the child Samuel grew on and was favor and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. And so she did just what she promised. And she gave Samuel back to the Lord by giving Samuel to the priest, right? Now we go back to three. I, I forgot to read that. So then it says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim, that he could not see. So I want you to pay attention to this. It says, And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, here am I. So far, so good. The Lord called um, Samuel and he answered, 
Here am I. Verse 5. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I call not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not my son. Lie down again. Verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. We're going to pause right there. So look at this. You've seen it. You've seen Hannah gave Samuel to the Lord just like she promised. Samuel grew in the house of God. He ministered unto the Lord before Eli. Then the Lord called Samuel. Sam said, here am I. Went to Eli. Said, I'm here. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back. He heard, him, heard the Lord call Samuel again. Went to Eli. He said, here I am. Eli said, I didn't call you. Third time it happens. Calls Samuel again. The Lord did. He goes to Eli. Samuel was raised in the church, in the temple, ministering to the Lord before Eli, but didn't know God. And so what am I saying to you? I want you to think about that. Have, have you ever been there? Have you been raised in the church? Maybe you've been in church all your life. Maybe you've been serving in ministry. Maybe you've been ministering, but you don't know God. You don't know God. And you said, Rebecca, how do you say he doesn't know God? Well, if you go back to 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7, it says, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Watch 8. And the Lord called unto Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. Watch this. And Eli perceived that the Lord, Eli perceive that the Lord had called the child. Therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, go lie down and it shall be if he call thee that thou shall say, speak Lord for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and laid down in his place and the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak for thy servant heareth. Now, have you been there? How many of us can say, I know God? And when I say we can say, I know God, I'm not talking about when you say you know God because you feel under pressure, you're in church, you don't want anybody else to know that you're not that confident in knowing God. I'm not talking about being arrogant, trying to prove something. I'm not talking about having a, an identity that you're trying to preserve. I'm talking about if nobody is watching and if you could be as honest as possible, can you say, I know God? I know his voice. I hear him when he calls. When you hear him call your name, Samuel, Samuel, do you go running to somebody else? I'm talking about, do you know God the way that we know each other? There are people in my life, and I'm not just talking about my blood relatives. I'm talking about people that I encounter regularly, that as far as my eyes have the ability to see, I can see them in a far distance and still know it's them, even when they're in a place I didn't expect them to be. Because I know they, the way they walk. I know their move. I know their mannerisms. If you put up a silhouette, and don't show me who's in the room, but show me that person moving and doing. I know it's them because I know their mannerisms. If I hear them call my name or speaking in a video that I don't know that they're present in the video or around me, I will say, is so-and-so here? I heard them because I know their voice. So my question to you is, do you know God like that? Do you know him like that? And do you know that he has created a system so that we can know him like that? We don't have to look at God as something on the outside of us. Oftentimes we're praying for something on the outside of us when God is with us. He's in us. And so it's not out there, it's in here. But do you know God that way? And what am I saying to you? I'm saying don't feel bad. We've got scripture right here to show that you're not the first person that maybe has been serving, grew up in church, and still don't know the voice of God. You have not been trained to know his voice. See, he would have been running back and forth to Eli. Thank God that Eli knew, oh, you better get around somebody that know, that can perceive God even when you can't. Good thing Eli knew to say, listen, that's God. Now, this time when you go back, I want you to say this. Are you in a place where you will listen to someone that they can train you to hear the voice of God? And I mean, not just somebody that can hear the voice of God. Are you in a place, is your heart, is your posture in a proper position where if someone tells you do X, Y, and Z, you will do what you're told to be closer to God, to hear him. Because he's already in you. What a waste to have him inside of you and then miss him, miss him, right? 
So I want to show you that. So I just want you to be comfortable in knowing this, right? Because being in church doesn't mean you know him. Serving in ministry doesn't mean you know him. Even ministering doesn't mean you know him, truly know God. Because remember, Samuel was ministering unto the Lord before Eli and still didn't know the Lord. Right? The way we would know each other is the way we need to know God. How well do you know God? So I remember reading in a time, come back to that. I, I remember reading before, you know, I would read the story of when they would know a cloud by day and fire by night. I remember reading that and I'm like, man, that would be awesome. I wish that. And then I remember the Lord saying, you have something far greater than a cloud by day and a fire by night to, far, to follow. You have something so much greater. Do you know that we have something so much greater than that? We have Christ on the inside of us. So on this beautiful holiday season, I want us to leave 2020 and go into 2021 with realizing that we have something far greater. Something far greater. Now look at Matthew chapter 1. And I'm going to read 18 through 23. And this is the far greater that I don't think we pay attention to. So I'm going to point it out today. And it says, now the birth of Jesus was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. What am I saying? I'm saying the very gift that Jesus Christ is and was the reason he came into the earth was to be with us. To be with us. So when you hear Emmanuel now, I want you to hear God is with me. What does that mean? That means I am guaranteed to be triumphant in this life. No matter what I'm dealing with, no matter what I'm facing, no matter what's up against me, no matter what adversity, I'm, no matter the worries, no matter the cares of this life, God is with me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all this other stuff shall be added because I am guaranteed to be triumphant. Why? Because Emmanuel. Why? God is with me. Not on the side of me. Not someone I'm praying to who on the outside God is with me when I hear him I can know him because he's with me at all times won't you see Emmanuel now in a different way understand that this gift is definitely a gift because God is with you with you always never leaving you never forsaking you you do what God tells you to do you work God's ministry and he will never leave you nor forsake you it is his promise to us so I want you to know that just like Samuel grew up in the temple and still didn't know God, we could be there too, but we don't have to be. And don't you settle to be that anymore, right? You should know him. You should know him, not only your pastor, not only other people that you see spiritual in the church. You should know him. You should hear his voice. You should recognize his voice. God loves us. He loves us. He loves us so much. He loves us so much that he sent his blameless son, not just to come, but to die so that we could be with him, Emmanuel, with us. I will always be triumphant, even when it looks like I'm losing, I'm winning. But you got to know that. Have you ever seen a basketball game or, or a boxing match and it looks like the one that was supposed to lose is well on their way to losing and at the very last second they make a shot? Or they do a knockout and you thought they were done for. But the right punch with the right power at the right time knocked out their opponent. I want you to know that God's got the right time. He is the victor and he wins every time. And you do too. So now I want you to know that we have Emmanuel. God is with us. He's with you. He's with you. I hope that encourages you today. I hope today that you stop looking on the outside of you for what God has placed on the inside of you to do his good will, to do his will and his good pleasure. 
I challenge you today to trust the Lord with all your heart, knowing that he is indeed, without a shadow of a doubt, with you. I love you. God bless you. And have a... Have a day with your neighbor.